BMW, it's not just your average car brand. For a generation of petrol heads, BMWs are the ultimate driving machines, and deservedly so. For decades, BMW has blessed us enthusiasts with machines that target our heartstrings like no other. If you have ever gotten behind the wheel of a BMW or have spoken to someone who has, you'll know what I'm talking about. BMWs are more equal than others. BMWs are a bit too special. At present though, there's trouble brewing at BMW. Their new design language is a bit too hard to digest and with the now imminent electric age, newer BMWs will no longer have the soul-stirring ICE engines that made the brand popular in the first place. And that leaves everyone who loves BMWs with this one question. Will new age BMW EVs be able to match their ICE counterparts in terms of driving appeal? Will the ultimate driving machine be the same in the future? Well, to find out, we decided to spend some time with BMW's brand new electric offerings in India, the i4 and the iX. So, here's your answer. The i4 is basically the more latest version. This is the second electric car that BMW is offering in India. But if you go by technicalities, well, this is something that marks the transition between uh, BMW conventional cars and their electric age. Now, uh, why I say that? Because see, this car compared to the iX, well, it looks relatively subdued. The design, of course, it's a bit polarizing, but it's not as radical as the iX is. Now, uh, this is also based on the same platform as the current Gen 3 series, as well as the 4 series. So the 4 series is basically uh, the lift back version of the 3 series. So this rides on the same CLAR platform and uh, it shows because this car, it feels more conventional in the sense how it looks and how the interior is designed. You have got this new uh, touch screen, which is seamless and you've got two screens here, nice 14.9 inch touch screen which is the same as the iX and it will soon debut on the 3 series as well. So this is a very nice screen. It runs on BMW's latest iDrive 8 uh, OS. And in that regard, of course, it feels a lot more advanced than your regular 3 series, especially the current version. Now, uh, in terms of driving, well, this is uh, the 40E version. So this is rear wheel drive, just like the 3 series again. So uh, this has a single motor at the back and this version features an 83.9 kWh lithium-ion battery pack. Now it has around 335 bhp on offer and it develops 430 Nm of torque. So it is uh, a quick car of course because it does 0 to 105 5.7 seconds. So it's more or less the same as the 330i. Of course it's not as quick as the M340i but because it's an electric everything is instantaneous. So the moment you step on the throttle well it just absolutely goes. Of course it has got different modes. It has got sport, it has got comfort, it has also got eco. So in sport it's a bit of an on-off thing as in the moment you do this it just goes so if you put it in comfort mode then it's a little subdued you can enjoy driving it leisurely it feels more like a luxury car but because it's a small car and it's a lighter car than the ix well it feels like a sedan like a typical bmw sedan performance uh, you can't really complain it is a fast car it has a top speed of 190 kilometers per hour we didn't get to test that on public roads but it is quite stable and it feels every bit as well engineered as a BMW should be. Now, uh, where it differs from your conventional 3 series is in terms of refinement, is in terms of tech, because this definitely feels like a car that is modern, that is new age. Uh, first of all is the refinement. You don't hear anything from outside. It is just so brilliantly engineered that you are completely isolated in this car. Now, the downside of a car that's so refined and electric is that you hear every single creak whatever little creak there is you can hear everything so that's the downside because this is dead silent inside it is a little weird in that sense because you're used to the sound of a petrol or a diesel engine i think we can all agree that it will take some time getting used to uh, the electric cars in that sense because they feel exactly the same it's like you're zoned out so that's about the refinement now coming to the drive experience but first let's start with the handling 
now it is really impressive the way this car goes because like i said when bmw or traditional car companies when they uh, make an electric car they don't compromise on that front so this feels like a bmw the steering is well weighted and it is quite direct it feels like you're driving uh, a 3 series in fact in fact in some areas i'd say it feels better because it is much lighter uh, especially at the front so uh, the nose is even more pointy and when you go around bends it actually is very communicative of course it is uh, a heavy car and when you turn it really hard you can feel it leaning on the outside wheels but uh, the grip is phenomenal and i think overall this is quite lively to drive you, you don't feel that there is any kind of compromise so for me this is what a bmw electric car should have been and it is what it is because uh, this feels everything like a 3 series uh, the handling is superb the steering is well weighted the nose is quite pointy and you've got a lot of grip plus this is the rear wheel drive version so if you turn the traction control off well of course you can light up the rear as well so uh, yes it has that playful nature and it is rear wheel drive it has those bmw ethos intact so uh, for me the i4 actually is the car that that marks the transition to electric age for bmw it is conventional in the sense how it looks because it looks more or less like the uh, 4 series so if you are a fan of bmw's current design so of course the i4 will be a better bet in that sense and in terms of tech and features well of course it is more modern than uh, the 3 series of course we have seen all these features will come in the 3 series but uh, even then this car it is right up there with the ix and this feels modern this feels up to date and this feels like something that is from the future and more importantly it's the price that is what seals the deal for this car this is price is just 70 lakh rupees so um, i'm just saying just because 70 lakh is by electric car standards it is quite affordable so uh, you're getting a car that is phenomenal to drive that is uh, from the future and more importantly the most important part about this car is that it has got a claimed range of 590 km now if you have range anxiety you can just forget about it because in real world also this is going to give you close to 450 km of range so at the moment this is the only electric car in india that claims to offer over 500 km of range and this is the longest uh, driving range that you'll get in any electric car in india right now so that is just phenomenal for the kind of price for the kind of tech for the kind of luxury that you're getting all that under 70 lakh rupees well i think this is a great deal and uh, in terms of driving dynamics also it's not a compromise it feels every bit as a bmw it is quite exciting to drive uh, of course there's no noise but uh, it definitely makes the 3 series feel quite outdated because this feels like what the 3 series would be in future or this is the future of motoring so in that sense it feels up to date and i think uh, if you drive this and you go back to a 320d or a 330i in fact so they will feel a bit yesterday in that sense because this is what uh, the present is this is what a modern bmw is and that's the direction they are going to take in the future of course i have said a lot of good things about the i4 but there are a couple of things which are not quite right with this car well first things first uh, this is a small car it feels quite cramped especially at the back so you have got a transmission hump in there and uh, it it's not quite spacious it is a little tight at the back so if you think that you know you should buy this instead of the grand limousine so be aware that uh, there is not a lot of space it's a strictly four seater and even then it's a little cramp at the back the other thing is it is decently equipped but uh, a couple of things are not standard on this car like for instance the m wheels that this has 19 inch wheels they are optional extras they are not standard with this car it comes with 17 inch wheels so again it, it looks quite cool but a lot of kit on this car is optional now the other thing that's worth highlighting is the comfort part it is quite comfortable it's not uh, really as firm as some of the electric cars are but it is a little firm in comparison to the 3 series now uh, the car engine 3 series it's perfect in terms of ride and handling if you ride it leisurely it feels quite nice to drive and it wafts along it feels like a luxury car but this uh, is a little stiff and uh, when you're driving on smooth roads it's absolutely perfect but if you go over a bump suddenly well the suspension kind of crashes into it and it's not very comfortable and the ride can be a little jittery over bad roads so uh, that is one thing that i noticed uh, driving this car in the city 
and because it's an electric uh, you know all of that noise filters into the cabin as well you have got different modes of course the ride uh, quality also changes but overall uh, whichever mode you drive it in it has that underlying firmness and if you want uh, a three series like experience i think uh, right now is the perfect sport saloon so i think this is not an all rounder like the three series as yet and there's a similar kind of feel when you brake as well this comes with inbuilt region system and you can virtually drive it with one pedal there are two modes here you have uh, d which is normal mode and then you have b which is uh, for one pedal driving so the region is really aggressive in that as soon as you lift off uh, the car d accelerates so in that sense it is quite aggressive if you're driving in the city you can virtually drive with one pedal but uh, when you're driving really fast and you want to stop uh, the brakes again it's something of a problem with electric cars uh, the brakes have a very void sort of feel uh, they feel quite wooden in the sense uh, they come in just immediately as in there is no progression and it doesn't feel as natural so this thing can get up to high speeds really quickly but when you try to stop it that's when you realize that there's a lot of momentum there's a lot of weight but uh, to stop it the brakes they are not as confidence inspiring as a regular 3 series now, of course in isolation this is a great car but the 3 series is the current yardstick in that standard so i am going to compare it with the 3 series in all respects but uh, those are the two areas i think ride quality and uh, the brakes especially that's when this car doesn't feel as sorted but uh, on all the other fronts i think this is a better and a more modern car than the 3 series Now while the i4 feels modern and cutting edge in comparison to a regular 3 series or regular BMWs well this feels a step up from the i4 because this is a completely radical design everything from the outside yes it is a little obnoxious the flared nostrils and the way this car looks it's not to everyone's taste but uh, overall i think when you step inside this car well that's where it is a total game changer and it takes the game forward to a totally new dimension now uh, the interior of this car it's like you are sitting in a concept car everything here is totally new in the sense it's not conventional in any sense the steering wheel for instance it's hexagonal and you have this curved display here of course it's like uh, the i4 but in this car it somehow feels a little more crisp what sets it apart is the way this car is designed how the interior is laid out now uh, as you can see the fit and finish is just spectacular and it has a lot of different design changes which make it feel more luxurious which make it feel like a concept car like i said for instance uh, the controls for seat you can see they have this crystal finish and they look just top class Similarly it has got buttons uh, to open the door there is a latch as well but you can use these buttons from here and you open the doors like that in terms of visibility also it feels more airy it is a big car it is a large car but uh, the visibility out is also quite good which is not the case with the i4 similarly uh, the biggest change is the fact that it has got no center transmission tunnel as you can see there's a uh, space to move around also if you want to swap seats there is basically nothing in here and you can sit here as if you know you are in a lounge uh, the kind of seats it has the comfort it feels like you are sitting on a sofa it feels so luxurious it is like a five star lounge uh, similarly uh, the bits around here as you can see it has got crystal effect here as well and there is this wood finish for uh, the center console so it is actually just a totally different car in the sense it redefines what you expect from BMW yes the i4 is all great but i think in terms of taking the game forward this feels like a generation ahead uh, of the i4 that's uh, down to the fact that it's made using a bespoke uh, electric platform this is not based on any ic vehicle so this is a completely new platform and that shows now uh, similarly in terms of driving also yes these are two different cars but uh, the ix it is a larger car it is much heavier this is nearly 2.5 tons and it comes powered by uh, a smaller battery this is the 40 uh, version but it has a battery size of 76.6 kilowatt hour but it has got two motors so this is an uh, all wheel drive it has got motor at the front as well as at the back total power output is lower than the i4 this develops around 322 bhp 
but it develops a lot more torque. This produces around 630 newton meters of torque. That's uh, similar to a diesel X5. And in terms of performance, this is no slouch because uh, despite the weight, despite the size, this does 0 to 100 in 6 seconds. Um, not that far again from the i4 and it is quite brutal in that sense. Now another thing is that it has artificial inbuilt sounds. It feels like as if you're driving a spaceship. Quite funny, but it actually gives the car a little more character in the sense when you drive this car, it feels like you are driving something special. Uh, so performance wise, yes, it is a quick car. And uh, the other thing is it has also got a high top speed. So this can clock 200 kilometers per hour as compared to 190 of the i4. So uh, in terms of performance, well, yes, you've got everything and it is a quick car. It is super refined, just like the i4. In fact, in terms of ride quality, this is where this car feels absolutely brilliant in the sense the ride quality is perhaps better than the X5 as well because it feels so supple. The ride quality is just phenomenal. Wherever you go, it doesn't feel firm. And that's quite surprising because this comes with steel springs. It doesn't have your suspension. So even then, the ride quality is just phenomenal. In fact, I, I'd go on to say that this probably has the best ride quality in its segment. You compare it with the e-tron or the EQC or even uh, the Jaguar I-Pace. All these cars are priced similarly, but I think this is the car that aces in terms of ride quality and comfort because the refinement, uh, the overall comfort, the seats, everything, all the luxuries this car has, it definitely feels cutting edge. And uh, I think it also is the most advanced in that sense because when you sit inside this car, it feels very, very special. And even the exterior, yes, it is polarizing, but uh, I think it has sort of that impact. Like wherever you drive, people just take out their smartphones and they start clicking pictures because it creates that sort of impact. It is radical in that sense. And I think over time, this design will grow on people. Uh, we have seen this with BMW, even during the Chris Bangle era, when BMW's design just took a completely different approach. Well, yes, even they met with a lot of criticism, but uh, you see Chris Bangle's cars uh, right now and they have aged really gracefully. They don't look old, in fact. So I think maybe in the future, uh, when, you know, the tastes will evolve, this is something that you like. So, and for me, I think it's design, the iX's design, it doesn't look as detestable in the flesh as it does on the internet or in pictures. This thing, it grows on you. So for me, I think the i4 is the perfect transition into electric age for a BMW fan or someone who's traditionally in love with IC cars. But uh, if you want something even more futuristic, if you want to have a glimpse into BMW's future, I think the iX, well, it just moves the goalpost to a whole new level. Uh, yes, when I came into this test, so I, I picked the i4 first. I thought that's the car that, you know, I want to drive. It's quite fun to drive. But when you drive the iX, it's uh, controversial looks aside. This is a car that I kind of enjoy driving more because it has got the performance. Even in terms of handling, it feels like a BMW. The steering has a lot of feedback and it's, it is quite direct. And just like the i4, because it has got no weight at the front, the nose is quite pointy. And I think even in terms of driving pleasure, this has got uh, the typical BMW appeal. So uh, for me, the BMW iX is actually quite a revelation. And uh, for me, it is that revolutionary approach that the BMW has taken with this car. Yes, you might not like the design, but if you want to get into electric motoring, if you're a BMW fan, just go and drive this once. Just experience the drive. And I'm sure you're going to get bowled over because this is just something else. And finally, if you think, uh, you know, electric cars, they have diluted the soul of BMW or they're not uh, ultimate driving machines like how a traditional BMW is. Well, yes, you can say that because they don't quite have the soul of an IC engine, like how a six cylinder BMW will feel, the engine, the performance, the revs, those things are not going to be here. What BMW has done here though, is that like other manufacturers, like uh, let's say Porsche, like Audi, what they have done is that they haven't changed their DNA. They still are the sort of cars that you'd expect uh, from a brand like BMW. They're engineered in similar way. So uh, yes, that BMW element is there, but their interpretation of EVs, well, it is totally different to, let's say, Porsche or Audi. Yes, in terms of performance, in terms of straight line speed, every car more or less feels the same. But uh, where they differ is the philosophy. So I think that is what uh, separates these cars from each other. 
and as for the people who criticize BMW for the new design language, who think that you know the new BMWs are quite ugly or they are quite brash and they don't have that classy look of old BMWs, well, you have to understand that these cars are made for the next generation. It is the generation which is inspired by style icons like Kylie Jenner, but they have the consciousness of Greta Thunberg. It's the next generation of buyers. They are uh, aware they don't want to harm the planet. They don't want their cars to produce fumes. They don't want cars that are noisy. They want cars that are sustainable or they're made of reusable parts. So that's the generation that BMW is aiming with these cars. They're not after petrol heads. You have to remember that cars, that age is over, that era is over. Now it's the electric age and love it or hate it, you have to accept the change. So this is the future and uh, the future that BMW has chosen is totally different to what you'd expect. But then if BMW has to take on the might of Tesla, well, it had to shake the foundations and that's what they've done with these cars.